God bless you in the mighty name of the Astrologos, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. My name is Dr. Dale Size. I'm very honored to be presenting to you today some research that I have collected on the upcoming eclipse of April 8th, along with the other two combined with it, the messages that is being communicated Christologically through these eclipses. There's been a lot of research goes into this, and I've been very pleased, very pleased, to see a lot of individuals pop out of the woodwork that's begun doing Christological astronomy research and looking at the heavens as the Word of God. Very, very pleased and seen some great research. And so a lot of this is a conglomerate of things I've learned from others and things I've put together. So if I am negligent in quoting my sources, it's not because I'm dishonest. It's just that I've studied so much I don't know which part goes where. And there's a lot of different uh, opinions and attitudes about the eclipses and, and, and their meanings. But I like to give you my take on this because everybody's contributing a little bit to the subject matter. I don't think anybody's got the total picture except Jesus. And uh, we're looking for him to come back and fill in the big picture. So to get to this, there's been a series of three eclipses that's happened over the landmass of the United States. It's been in North America and other places, but primarily this is the American eclipse. And what we're going to show you today is the paths that these eclipses have taken and the Christological meaning of this. So there's going to be millions and millions of people that's going to view this eclipse. And they'll be looking at it going, oh, wow, the moon's covering the sun. And look at the outline. It's a, it's a ring. It's a halo. Oh, it's completely total. And, and it'll go black and the birds will start chirping like the sun's going down. And it's really a neat experience. But what does it mean? What does it mean? So sensational. Oh, yes, sounds just like Hollywood. But what is it saying specifically to us? And one of the big issues of this is when eclipses take place or comets come through or whatever, you have to look at where in the backdrop of the heavens this is occurring. Now, these three eclipses took place. The first one in August in 2017, the sun and the moon were eclipsed in conjunction with the star Regulus in the constellation of Leo. Leo, the line of the tribe of Judah, the next eclipse that took place, the eclipse took place in conjunction with Spica, the dominant star in Virgo. Virgo and Leo are the two constellations where kingdoms change. That's the beginning and the end of the Maseroth, right? Well, I want to show you that in these signs that there is a beginning and ending sign over the United States during these eclipses, okay? Lastly, the one April 8th of this year, 2024, the eclipse will be, the sun and the moon will be in the band of Pisces. And in the band of Pisces, the particular band of Pisces, it references Andromeda, the shackled bride. What this is telling us is, these eclipses are telling us a couple of things. I'm going to give you the summary at the end. But what it's telling us is, we need to repent. Judgment is coming on the United States. It's coming. We deserve it, and we're going to get it. And this is what the eclipse is telling us. So to get to the meteor matter of this, the weightier things of this, first of all, when the eclipse took place on August 21st of 2017, from August 21st, 2017 to April 8th of 2024, it's 2,422 days. You think, of what's the big deal about that? If you divide 30 days for 30 days per month into 2,422, you come up with 6.66666. There is a message that's going on here, okay? And that, that would, rel it would be relative to six years, six months, and six days that these eclipses are apart. And where the paths that they make it's what's so telling and so revealing about the message that it is. First and foremost, we realize that God told us in these eclipses, in the first one in 2017, the king is coming because of the location of the eclipse in Leo. In the second one, he said to the bride, you better get ready. There's going to be a kingdom change. And in this last one, it's saying there's going to be a war. There's going to be fighting. If you're going to be free, you're going to have to. You're going to have to struggle, as the Bible says. We'll have to fight and endure hardness as good soldiers, which we will do. We will do. 
Let me say this also. There's a lot of my contemporaries that studying this that believes that this eclipse is announcing a pre-tribulation rapture. I hope you're right. I'd love to get out on the first boatload. I really would. I've often told people about their theories of the tribulation. Maybe you get what you believe for. If you think it's a pre-trib, maybe you get to go early. If you think it's a mid-trib, you get out halfway. If you think it's a post-trib, then you've got to go through all of it. So if that's the case, then I think everybody's going to change and believe in the pre-tribulation rapture. I mean, I, if I've got to go to a fist fight or a party, I'll take, the, I'll take the party, right? So, But anyway, these are very interesting things, and let us all be very level about this. Nobody's got all the answers on this, aside from the guy that's coming back that's going to give us all the answers. So we're all putting it together, playing our parts in the body of Christ. But let me get to the, as I said, the meteor matter of these things. First of all, what is an eclipse? Well, an eclipse is where a shadow blocks out something in, in the heavenly realms. Okay? And it, there, there are solar eclipses and there's lunar eclipses. Now, the solar eclipses is when the sun and the moon are on the same side away from the earth. Okay? And then what causes the solar eclipse is actually the moon passing in front of the sun. And as the rotation of the earth happens, then that shadow moves over the face of the earth. And where the eclipse takes place is very important. I mean, on the land mass or wherever it's taking place. And here, these three in the United States within a six, uh, seven year period, if you want to go that way, uh, is very significant as far as the message it is given to us. So, in the lunar eclipse, then the sun is on one side, the moon is on the other, and then the earth makes the shadow that blocks out the, the sunlight that reflects off the moon. So eclipses have always been omens and not good omens either. More solar eclipses, people tend to attribute that to universal things that's happening around the world. And lunar eclipses specific to the area where the, where the eclipse is taking place. These right here and these three eclipses is marking the United States. It's a message to the United States and to the world that there's getting ready to be a big, big change coming on this planet. And, it's, and I believe, I believe as we're heading down the end time corridor. And one of the, my firm beliefs in the end times is that one of the purposes of the end times is that God's going to wipe out the bad guys to give Jesus good footing for his new kingdom to come. Amen? And I'm excited about seeing that happen. So these eclipses are important. They're very important, and as I said before, you have to look at where they're occurring, when they're occurring, and where in the heavens they're taking place. So, as we move to this, let me show you this chart I have here, which is the first and second eclipse. And these are total eclipses. In other words, the sun's completely blocked out. The, the one that happened in October of 2023 was a total eclipse, but when the moon is farther away from the Earth then it's not big enough to cover the sun, so it almost covers the sun, and there's a ring left around it, and that's called the annular ring. It is a total eclipse, but the moon is farther away, so there's three total eclipses that took place here. And uh, so the first one that happened, the eclipse entered at Salem, Oregon, and exited at Salem, South Carolina. And that particular eclipse intersected the shadow that the moon made as it passed across the face of the earth, it passed through seven cities named Salem. Okay? And Salem, of course, is the root word for Jerusalem. It's, uh, it, it means peace or righteousness. Oh, like I said, it's the root word of Jerusalem. So it was a sign to us that the king is coming because that eclipse took place in Leo. And so that says the king is coming, and he's going to bring peace to the world. And so that's where that, that started. It, the 2017 eclipse entered at Salem, Oregon, and exited at Salem, South Carolina. Okay. Now, the one, the 2024 eclipse, this is amazing here. What's going to happen here? The entry point of this eclipse is Eagle Pass, Texas. I mean, this is where all the conflict is going on between the federal government and the Texas Rangers or the Texas uh, National Guard and the trucker convoy is headed right to that spot. So interesting. And what's really interesting about this is these two eclipses, X 
marks the spot. And you see where the X, the intersection of these eclipses are. This is a very, very telltale sign because the crossing point of these two eclipses is on the, the New Madrid fault line. And it's actually intersecting at a place called Little Egypt, Illinois. Uh huh. Little Egypt, as in the signs that were necessary to free the children of Israel from the bondage of Egypt. Brothers and sister believers in the United States and around the world, we are in every bit as much bondage as the children of Israel. We're looking at shackles and handcuffs and slave labor, but we're enslaved in our minds to the principalities and powers that's deceived the world. That's changing. That's going to change. Amen. So, this is amazing because in this intersection right here, I want to, I want to, tell, I want to tell you something, okay? In 1806, there was a solar eclipse that passed by in a very similar proximity to here. And then in 1811, there was another eclipse that passed by and intersected the New Madrid fault line 100 miles south of where this present one is, okay? Three months after those eclipses, then in 1811 was a series of the greatest earthquakes that's ever happened in the history of the United States. There's the 8.8, 7.8, and an 8.1 that happened, bing, bang, boom. That's the time that they recorded that the Mississippi River flowed backwards. Now listen to me. On that day of the eclipse is coming up on April 8th of this year, 2024, all of the visible planets to the naked eye are going to be visible at the time of the eclipse. They're all on the same side of the sun. And it's going to be the side that we can view. This is, this is huge at the time of the eclipse. And what I've taught people in interpreting eclipses: is, what do you see when the lights go out? Well, when the lights go out or, or we pass through the shadow of the moon as it crosses over the face of the earth and the sun, etc., as that shadow passes over us, it's showing us. It's showing us what's going to take place. Now, in times similar to this where the, the planets have all been on one side of the sun, visible from the earth, lots of earthquake activities. Now, I have heard prophecy after prophecy of angels holding the New Madrid fault line together because if it ruptures and splits, there's going to be a river 200 miles wide that splits the United States in half. It came through from the northwest down to uh, through Texas and it also intersected at Eagle Pass, another intersection point. I tell you, the immigration crisis in this country if the country wasn't already destroyed, that could be the, the straw that breaks the camel's back. Anyway, we want to be wise as serpents and harmless as dove and walk circumspectly. The days are evil. We know that. But we are not disappointed. We're not dejected. We're, we're, not, we're not without hope because we know the answer to these dilemmas as they are. So, but in this, now when you see this as the final construction here, it very closely resembles the Hebrew letter Aleph the three eclipses and the shadows that they made. Now, when you just look at the, the two that we uh, looked at before, it makes an X, but that's also the Hebrew letter Tau. So the Aleph and the Tau is the same as the Alpha and the Omega. Now, John wrote the book of Revelation in Aramaic, in Hebrew. Then it was translated into Greek. But when Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, he says, I am the Aleph, I am the Tau. Hello? both of them right here in this eclipse, the beginning and the end. Could this be the beginning of a new government in the United States? Could it be the beginning of a new form and fashion of government here? Could the old one be over? It's just about run its value. And there's more rot in it than there is good wood. So one way or the other, God will have his way. Now, this other eclipse that I was telling you about, back to this one, the one on the April 8th of this year, it likewise is going to intersect seven cities, but they're not Salem, the seven cities that this eclipse is going to intersect. This is the one that came uh, six years, six months, and six days, 666 after the first one. <laughs> mm. 
it's a very, very, very powerful sign in the heavens. It really is. And it's uh, this New Madrid fault line happening when, when the eclipse takes place. And then with the additional gravitational pull on the planets lining up on the Earth, we could see some serious, serious activity happen geophysically. You know, the greatest fear we have in the United States of a geophysical event is the Yellowstone earthquake, which these, are, these things are going on too. But then the April 8th eclipse, it passes through the seven cities. And like I said before, it's not, it's not seven Salem's, it's seven Nineveh's. You got that right. And Nineveh is who Jonah prophesied against. And guess what? They did repent. So this is the direction of us that we need to have. And we'll get, I'm going to get to this more whenever I do the wrap-up and summary of this. So you can see that Hebrew alphabet's the beginning and the end. This is amazing because right after this eclipse, April 8th, 2024, 40 days after that eclipse, and 40 days is the number of trial improving, pass fail, <laughs> pass or fail in 40. And those 40 days after the 8th of April only ends up happening on the day of Pentecost. 40 days after the eclipse is the day of Pentecost. Paying attention? Are you paying attention to the fulfillment of the feast days? And this is again why a lot of people are believing that this is a sign for the pre-tribulation rapture. Could be a partial rapture. Could be 144,000 get new bodies at one time on that day. I don't know what's going to happen. And it's, it's really refreshing, I think, to be able to say that. We all have our ideas and we all have our desires that we'd like to see happen, but that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is absolute signs in the heavens and where they occur on the earth and the messages that they're saying. Now, the April 8th eclipse is located in the band of Pisces. This eclipse is called the Jonah sign because of him prophesying over Nineveh. Incidentally, there was a solar eclipse that went over Nineveh in 763 BC. This is very close to the time that Jonah was prophesying. And that may have been the reason that caused Nineveh to repent. Best we can tell, best I've been able to tell, there's never been a major repentance like that aside from Nineveh in the entire history of mankind. Not a turning like that of, of, a, of a pagan nation. But what did it? They saw the eclipse and they feared God. And when you see this eclipse, you better fear God too because the whole meaning of this is judgment. 666. 2,422 days separating the two solar eclipses of 2017 and 2024, representative of six, six years, six months, and six days. You think that's a sign of judgment coming? Wow. What about when X marks the spot at the New Madrid fault line? What about entering at Salem and exiting at Salem? What about the seven Ninevehs? The seven cities of Nineveh. There's more to this. The, the intersection in the northwest portion of the country around Washington and Oregon is on a fault line as well. And all the, the chaos is erupting at the borders. These intersections of these eclipses, of these eclipse paths, are very, very, very highly interpretive. Now, this eclipse that's taking place on April 8th will be directly, specifically located in the band of Pisces. Now, Pisces right over the top of Cetus the sea monster, the devil, who we believe around this time in Revelation 12 somewhere, he's cast out of heaven. And he comes down to the earth knowing that his time is short. Do you think that could be what causes the wars and rumors of war? Do you think that could be what's causing? In the, all the wholesale deaths that's going on around the world, we're heading down the end time corridor. I don't think I can honestly say anything else. But these massing of the planets on this day of the eclipse, uh, not always do you see things happen on the day of the eclipse. But sometimes you do. And we're looking forward to seeing some things happen. Hey, look, I want to see the change. 
I hate the world and the things of this world and what's going on in this world. And even the United States being the last stronghold of freedom, this place is so corrupt, it's rotten, it's rotting. I don't think we need to drain the swamp, I think we need to burn it and then rebuild it someplace else if we're going to have what kind of government we're going to have. But we need to get out of Washington, D.C. It's, it's theoretically located right where Satan wanted it. And we need to move the Capitol. Just telling you. And, and, and look, we've got Persephone on top of the Capitol building. The Queen of Heaven on top of the Capitol building. Then you got the whore also in the, in the harbor coming into New York City. What do you think God feels about this nation and the government and what they've done? This is a Christian nation. It was, it still is. It's just that we got idiots at the top to give us false reports and tell us lies. And I thank God for these signs of these eclipses and the changes that are going to take place in this nation and around the world. We are seeing the signs of Jesus coming. And remember, all this stuff about the end times, the seals, the deaths, all this stuff, wiping out the bad guys. Jesus is going to get a thousand year reign on this planet, and he's king of kings and lord of lords. And all these sons of Belial, these workers of iniquity, they will fall on their own swords and choke in their own blood. These are dire times. These are dire times. Listen, wake up in the name of Jesus Christ. Do what Nineveh did. Pay attention to the eclipses. They're telling you something. You know what they're telling you? Judgment's coming. Repent. What about if the rapture does take place on Pentecost of this year? Are you ready? Do you have your affairs in order? Good questions that we all personally need to ask ourselves and answer them properly with the proper actions. I increase the decibels of my voice at that time because this is important. This is not something to be shunned and say, well, let's see what other YouTube I can see and watch. Let me, see, let me watch something that will make me feel good. I tell you what will make you feel good when you hear the trumpet blast of Jesus Christ and you appear before him in his presence. That will make you feel good. There's your feel good. Until then, we're not looking for feel goods. We're looking to live righteously, holily, unblameably and justly in this world that we can be examples of him when the world has no light to see they can see it in us so these are the, this is the messages of the eclipse that judgment's coming are you ready for it so you need to repent get your life right with Jesus Christ and that's not hard to do he said my yoke is easy and my burden is light <laughs> so Walk in his ways and walk in his obedience. Don't be deceived by the things of this world. Just read a great article from Derek Prince's ministry on the subject of deception. He said the problem that we have, the biggest problem we have according to the Bible is not sickness, not wars. But the greatest problem we have is deception. Don't get deceived. Don't believe everything you think. And for God's sake, don't believe everything you read. And don't believe anything you see on the news, on the mainline news. Just count it as a lie. That's all they're doing is lying to us and the government as well. So I'm not negative. I am upbeat. I am, I'm looking forward. Part of our hope is to see the bad guys get it in the end. And to live and see a righteous king rule over the earth. You be faithful. You'll see that. You'll live in it. The reward of faithfulness is to reign with him on the earth. And he's coming. Hey, listen. All the comments that's come through that I'm aware of in the past 20 years has all been saying the same thing. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. And the same thing happened the first time he came. All sorts of celestial announcements and everything happening, and he came. Guess what? He's coming again. Yes, the dead get raised because he got raised. And we will see him and we will live with him in the kingdom. And we will see him face to face. Thank you, Lord. For these signs that you've given us, that these are yea and amen, you said in your word, that in the end times there'll be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars. Lord, the whole world's hearts are failing because of fear. They're afraid of what's coming on the earth. We are not. We are prepared, 
and whatever it takes. If it costs us our lives, we will break the tape at the finish line. We will be faithful. Thank you, Lord, for the blood that you shed, the life that you gave. Father, we pray for every man and woman and child on this planet that they can hear the truth of the gospel, they can realize the word of God written in the heavens, that it every day has languages and voices that people can read because it's written in pictures. And we thank you, Lord, for this, this blessing of knowing these things. So remember, the eclipses took place, Leo, Virgo, and Pisces. Leo said the king is coming. Virgo said he's going to bring his bride to reign with him. And Pisces says, you're going to war. The bride has got to be freed, and we will be free. And these eclipses are telling us these things are coming on the earth. Why, why did he tell us ahead of time? Get prepared. Get prepared. Forty days after April 8th is Pentecost. Could that be the rapture of the church? We'll see. But I tell you one thing, there's going to be some events that takes place in this earth, and it's not going to take long at all. It could be geophysical, it could be political, it could be economic, it could be military, it could be health, probably all the above. And we'll see how these things break out, but hey, surely our times are in His hands. It's nice to know and have that confidence. Our God is omniscient. He's already walked through the creation and seen what would take place we are going to get a chance to experience it firsthand. What an exciting time to be alive. Don't run and hide. Put your light on a, on a candlestick. Don't put it under a bushel basket or under your bed. Let your light so shine before men that they can see your, the good works that you do for your Father in heaven. And glorify Jesus Christ as you do in your walk. Represent, replicate Him in your words, in your actions, in your thoughts, in your deeds. You're God's representative on the earth. Repent. Judgment is coming.